long time ago, a beautiful girl called Chokoni was born to a couple. Her parents decided to arrange her marriage to a man from a neighboring Angame village when she grew up. But as she grew older, she disliked the idea and pleaded several times to her parents not to marry her off to strangers. Chakoni told her parents that she was not willing to get married and settle in a stranger's village. I want to marry someone from our village and settle here. I do not want to be in a new village as I will feel lonely, she said. As time passed by, she reached a marriageable age. Her parents told her about the marriage proposal that came from other villages and some also from her own village. When she heard about it, she said, Mother, you go, father, you go, but I won't go. Then her mother told her, My dear child, no one gives birth to the children to let them see their mother or father's marriage. It's not the way. Be it waging war, building a house, or cultivating a new field, it was a custom to consult dreams. Thus, one night, Chokoni had a bad dream. She woke her mother up and narrated her dream. In my dream, a group of bees pulled a strand of my hair from the center part of my head and flew away, she said. Her mother told her that the dream is not a bad omen, but it is a kind of prophecy to her. And she said that she will give birth to a baby boy after her marriage. At first, she was reluctant to believe her mother. But as tradition, she waited again for the next day to see what will be her dream. This time, she dreamt of an anonymous enemy piercing her heart with a sharp spear. Her mother interpreted the dream saying that it's nothing but just a prophecy that she and her future husband will host the feast of merit. Chokoni was an obedient and innocent girl. She believed her mother's advice and finally she accepted the proposal arranged by her parents. Her father told her that the danger area will be over once she crossed the boundary of the Chakre Jovo village stream. She asked her parents to arrange her wedding costumes such as the bamboo basket, rice bear, walking stick and also to send message to her groom's family to come and pick her. When the day of her wedding arrived, no one from the groom's side came so she set out all alone. She wore her wedding ornaments and attires packed her food with meat and rice. In the ancient days, it was a usual costume for the friends and relatives to accompany the bride to her groom's house on the wedding day. They also set out early at dawn to reach the groom's house before sunrise. But sadly for Chokoni, there was none to drop her. Though she was alone, she decided to go because she did not want to disappoint her parents. After bidding farewell to her parents, she started walking towards her destination. She carried the bamboo basket and her walking stick supported her each step. After walking quite a long way, she felt tired and thought of resting for a while. When suddenly, a strange suspicious man came from the opposite direction. He caught hold of her and asked her, Young lady, whose daughter are you? She was brave and composed. She kept calm and did not reply to him. Again, he asked her, What is your father's name? Jokoni knew that the man was an enemy and so she replied to him, I will neither tell you my father's name nor my mother's name. I will not tell you my name because I know you will not release me. The enemy replied, If you tell me your father's name, I will release you. But she refused 
and she told the enemy that her name is Jokoni and her brother's name is Junyu. She told the enemy that her brother will surely avenge her death. She was not sure when her brother will complete his agrarian work in the fields and return back to their village. But when he heard the news of her death, he will surely avenge her. Jokoni told the enemy that after taking her head, he must spare her body to be sent to her parents. But the enemy was merciless. She was beheaded, but he threw her body away into the river. It was the summertime and rained heavily. There was no news of her, so her village people went to look out for her. But they did not find her body. They searched for her thoroughly, and when they almost gave up, they heard the news that she became a victim of an enemy headhunter. They did not want to feel like losers, so they made up a story on the way. When they reached home, they told the villagers that Chakoni was drowned while crossing the river and her body could not be retrieved. In the olden days, head hunting was a common practice among the Nagas. The concept of head hunting was to keep an enemy's head after slaying him. However, head hunting became a thing of the past with the advent of Christianity.